What is going on, everybody? Happy Monday. Uh, not such a happy Monday for me. It was really a, just a just a complete mess football wise for me yesterday. And, and then if I did have any good lineups, I, I was guaranteed to have at least two players injured and, and, and removed. And David Montgomery was the, the one who I had the most exposure to. And of course, he was out at and not, not, you know, to add salt to the wound, uh, you get Herbert or his backup or whatever. I don't know if he had the best day of everybody, but he ran for what 120 yards and two touchdowns. Um, so it just, it just, it just was a frustrating day. Um, had a really good baseball slate on Friday. I had a really good chance to win the the, the big one. Uh, just didn't quite get there. And, uh, that's sort of been the story for my, my stuff lately. Um, and I'm hoping we turn it around tonight on this tiny little four gamer sheets. How are you doing? How was your weekend? And, uh, I was, I was off to a really good take, man, with my just ridiculous overweight on Derrick Henry. They hit like 19 and a half fantasy points, even running bad, um, in the first half. Yeah, they didn't give him the ball on the one yard line, and I thought he was off to a forty burger. And then I was going to be really pissed that I paired him with like David Montgomery. You know what I mean? Like, right. uh, and, and 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 then I was gonna, I was, I don't know if anybody was watching our our stream, follow this, but did anybody notice that the first quarter, who was two for fifty, was was Alec Pierce? Was the aforementioned Alec Pierce? Oh, was, I didn't notice that. No. Yeah, he was started. He got targets. He was like off to the races. He was. I'm like, oh my god, if he goes like eight for a hundred and a touchdown and wins the slate, I'm really not going to be happy. <laughs> um, but I, I think he kind of faded away after that. But um, but he's going to be. He'll, he'll, he's part of. He's part of part of the crew there now. He's going to be. He's going to be popular for a while. I think. Um, Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Um. Uh. So I ended up not doing well in football either. Um, but I'm ready to, you know, to, you know listen, I just went to Temple today for Rosh Hashanah. So I didn't think I was going to do anything today, but I'm back. So I could handle this little four game slate with you, Bobby. And then maybe mm-hmm. we'll, we'll do a, uh, do a showdown slate. Like it's a big, it's a big game in New York, man. It, there are actually some Giants fans that are convinced that the Giants are not that bad just because they happen to be two and oh, the, yep. first, the first two games of the season. So, and they, and they get a, they get a, you know, they get a banged up Dallas team with no, uh, with no, uh, with no Prescott. So it's possible the Giants are on track to be like the worst three and O team in history. So we'll we'll see we'll, we'll we'll see how that works. But overall, it was a fun fun day for football, it's sort of because listen, I was right about the the Colts being a outright winner over the Chiefs, um, and the Dolphins being an outright winner over Buffalo. I was right with those two things. And I um, was the, I was the Jags over over over. Yeah. Fingers. We had everything. I did the Jags over uh, over the what's it called? Whether Herbert played or not. Uh, the yeah. San, yeah. San Diego. All right. Hey, All right. let me ask you a question. Are the Jags good? Are the Giants the the, the, the Jags? Good? The Jags. The Jags are good. Uh, yeah. they're, they're talented, and they're they're putting it together. I really think that that they, they, they had the biggest upgrade of anything just by coaching, uh, a right. coaching grade. And they they have a lot of talent, and Trevor Lawrence looks really good. And they should have won the first game they played too. They should be three and zero right now. And uh, and I think they're going to be they're going to be some a team to look out for a little bit. Um, I don't know if they're going to make the playoffs, but they'll be right in that range, is my guess. All right. So you want to get started with today's <laughs> yeah. baseball? Yeah. This is. I mean. Look, it's a four gamer. It's uh, it's at still pays fifty k for first. Yep, still so it's at six thirty. Um, I really hope nobody's paying attention because these yeah, are the ones. That, these are the ones that I win. I know sheets. This is this is all you. This has you written all over it. So we have to obviously we know that the name of the game is to get really different on these slates. Uh, the the only time you're gonna really have a, a real chance to get different is probably in this first game, um, Cincinnati and and Pittsburgh. I. I, I would naturally, if I just looked at the slate and I, I would say, okay, of course I want to play Contreras. Um, but I don't think you can, like, he's going to be probably 65% owned. I really think it, it'll be like that high. And it's a good matchup in the right park and everything, but I, I don't mind taking the, the other side of this and, and trying to get different by playing the Reds because I do think every other stack is going to be owned except for um, Washington. Uh, won't, won't have crazy ownership, but unless you're going to play Washington, I, I, I think the reds are, are probably what you're looking at doing that. You don't need a full stack on these slates. We've talked about that before, but I think you can get a sub 10% for the stack. And I don't see that with almost any other team today. So uh, my natural feeling was to play Contreras. My, what I'm probably going to end up doing is playing the reds. Yeah. So from a projection perspective, uh, Contreras does rate to be, you know, the best play. Um, but I will say this, that he doesn't rate to be that great of a play. If that makes any sense. I mean, like, like he rates to be a good play, like relative to like maybe some of the other guys on here, but it's not as though he's a lock or anything like that. And, and quite honestly, I don't really need to play him. Um, so I'm sort of in agreement with you. I don't know if, if, if I need to, 
So here's a question: Like, do you, uh, four games? Like, do you need to play the Reds, or is it enough to not play Contreras? No, it's not um, enough to not play Contreras. He's not that popular. Oh, okay. Yeah, I have him at forty-five percent ownership. This is like early, but then yeah. on the other hand, I have the Atlanta guy at like fifty-five percent. So we guys got to talk about that in a second, also. Um, I mean, there are only a couple of pitchers on the whole slate, so I mean, everybody's going to be on, on, on to some degree. But yeah, uh, yeah you know, I mean, you don't have to talk me into, into the Reds. Obviously, I prefer to I prefer to play the Reds at home. Um, but you know, like you said, if Contreras is going to be just insanely popular, this is baseball, and and I, you know, I'm never going to argue with you over getting leverage over the most popular pitcher, especially the most popular pitcher who's 7,500. You know, because right. because they're 7,500, they're probably not as good as the guy who's 10, 10 5, You know, it's right. it's hard to say. Okay, I don't like Degrom at 70, percent so I'm just going to just stack the Tigers against Degrom. Great, <laughs> right? Good luck to you. You know, but I do think the Reds could actually score runs against against. A guy like Contreras, if in fact you know the ball breaks, you know the way the way you want it to. So I'm mm-hmm. not I'm not opposed to that, but you know in in terms of like projections, so I do have uh, Contreras projected as you know mildly the best play. <laughs> um, and uh, what about Pittsburgh as far as hitting goes? You getting to them at all or not? Yeah, it's really? fine. It's just uh, they're, they're, you're not you're not getting the same. It's not really d- different um, enough. Maybe maybe if you play the bottom of the order. Um, but I think you're talking about 20% owned players and it's just that these, do you want to do that? Uh, obviously Castro would be my favorite at his price. Uh, Sawinski and Reynolds, the next two favorites for me, uh, followed by Cruz, but those guys are, I expect to all be, you know, well into the double digit ownership side of things. So I'm not, I'm just trying to, trying to get different. So I, I absolutely like the pirates just fine, but I don't think that it's anything that like I have to do or anything like that. I just feel like every, every stack is going to rate fairly similarly for me today. And uh, the Pirates are definitely on the board, but I, I'm going to let ownership dictate what I actually do. And all the um, – and only because I mean, we, we do all, only have four, four games, we could touch on all these guys. I mean, any any anything with uh, – any take on Chase Anderson at all? I mean, because I, I do have him rated, like, just yeah. kind of okay, you know. I, I don't um, think but, there's anything wrong with Chase Anderson. I just – it's hard to get excited about it. Um, low low floor low probably a pretty low ceiling but he's been a little bit better in real life over his last four starts um it's obviously a a fine enough matchup um i think he'll have some ownership but if you're desperate at 6300 i think that he makes some sense um i just personally like some other guys better um that's where i'm at just to let you guys know the three cheapos for the pirates that are standing out to me um if you wanted to play pirates are the are the cheapos is swinsky at 2300 castro at 2800 and Cal Mitchell at twenty one hundred. Those are like the those are like the cheap guys. Yeah. If you didn't want to play the Reds, uh, I have this guy. Oh, the 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 well, Aquino's always a good GPP play. Um, he's twenty four hundred. Friedel thirty six thirty six hundred. And then the Stuart Fairchild at twenty three hundred. He's showing up for me as well. That's mm-hmm. those are like the top kind of like values for me. Yeah, that makes sense. I I, got the, I have the same. Um, all right, Atlanta and Washington. Uh, like I again, I, I would like to play Elder. I, I I think he's talented. He's got a good you know K rate. It's a good matchup. Um, going to be really popular, yeah. and I think you, you know of of the other of the two stacks that you're going to get low ownership on. I like Cincinnati a little better than I like Washington, but I think you can make an argument that Washington has the other the other low owned nonsense to do on the slate. Or you could not stack and try and hope to hit the nuts or whatever. Um, but I do think Washington stays low owned. And I think that this is a reasonable enough. I don't think that it's a guarantee with a young pitcher that that he, that he goes out there and just has the game, the perfect game or whatever. So I, I like the idea of playing some of the nationals with with the Reds to try and win a big GPP. Uh, that's where I'm at. And the, the guys I'd be using, Manessis, 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 um, uh Lane Thomas, Luke Voigt, Alex Call is the cheap option. CJ Abrams is a cheap option. I'm probably going to end up with Reds and Nationals just because of the ownership on this slate. And uh, if I'm not, I will be playing Elder if I don't end up with Washington. Well, and you also uh, talked about, well, because you didn't mention him, you you kind of touched on why you're not mentioning him. I, mean, I, I do think Atlanta is going to be... Uh, oh, my fault. Yeah. It has, has, has to be the most... Po- I mean, I imagine it has to be the most popular stack on the slate. Um, yep. I think they will um, be. And they probably are the best stackers, you know. I mean, whatever. But 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 yeah. like you said, you can't play um, Contreras, Elder, and the and, and in the Braves. You know, what I mean? like you just, expect expect to be yeah. There's just, you're just if, unless you unless you want to leave like five, you pull a sheet to leave like fifty two hundred on the table or something like that, um, uh, which might be able to do actually. Yeah. Um, 
that that is something you could do but i don't even think that's gonna be particularly different on a slate like this um um so what's Atlanta bringing to the playoffs? They're gonna, so they're going to have Freed, Morton, Strider, and Elder. That's basically the. That's, that's I don't know what they're going to roll out there. Yeah, that's, that that's sounds that sounds pretty good. Yeah. You know, I, although I don't know, I don't know if I'm too too uh, too afraid of of Strider in a playoff for it. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how that yeah. goes. Um, but yeah, so as I mentioned, Atlanta does look to be the top stack, um, but they're going to be the most highly owned. So you have to make those decisions, you know. And I, I do have Elder. You know, probably do I have him second? Well, again, we'll talk about Gausman in a minute. But as, as far as like pure values go, you know what I mean. I do have Elder rated right there, just behind Contreras. And I do have Atlanta rated the highest. But again, in GPPs, you can't, you just can't do that. You've got to play. I mean, preferably non-chalk pitchers with non-chalk hit, non-chalk hitters. But at the very least, you have to you have to sacrifice somewhere. Or like you said, or if you just play, you know, not stack and just and just play like two by two by two by two by two across the board. You know, then then you can then you can get different that way. Um, yeah. Like for example, like you want to play those those three pirates I mentioned, and just those three, and then you want to take like two guys from Atlanta, and then pick your favorite two guys from these other games. Maybe you can get away with it, but just to go five man stacking, you know, Contreras with Gaussman or or Elder with Gaussman or Elder with Contreras with the with the with the Braves. Um, that's just you're just putting yourself putting too much pressure on yourself to be perfect and even if you are perfect you still might chop it you know so right uh, right uh yeah i don't, I don't know, know if I, can, I don't know if i can do washington but but uh i definitely understand it yeah um i i uh i that's that's what i'm gonna do probably is play play cincinnati and washington so and then because of that it's gonna force me into playing these next the, the, the two high price pitchers i think is where i'm gonna end up and I don't mind him in the same thing. Um, Severino, they have to get him ready for the for the postseason now. So I, I think that like he only threw sixty four pitches last time out. I think that he probably throws eighty. Um, but it feels a little thin. But you're going to get a little lower ownership because of it in this next game. And and I I, I like the idea of of both these pitchers, unless you wanted to get weird and creative and decide to to stack against these guys. Um, that's that's fine too. I don't think that I think you're going to get low ownership on both these sides, except for Aaron Judge, and I think that uh, that that would be another thing you could do. But I'm gonna, I'm electing to, to use these this pitching and play the hitting from Cincinnati and Washington. Well, my uh, my my uh, my Yankee marketing machine narrative played out. They were unable to get unable to get it done at home in front yeah. of all the fans, and you should have seen it. Like the fans are like so tilted. They're like so so steamed. They're all paying like quadruple prices to go to these games you know and to just just for the Aaron, just for the Aaron judge right and and it just can't and then yesterday the freaking sky fell in like the seventh inning and the like the thunderstorms and lightning and that was the end of that um so they now now it's like literally the worst they're like not only sending them out of new york they're not sending them to fenway they're not sending the weather they're sending them to freaking toronto and and so um so anyway, I I don't know. I just think it's kind of cool. I mean, I love yeah. I, I love the Yankees. I mean, they've been in my team for a long time. But but to just I just the one thing I don't like is the way they just they feel as though they just own the city. You know what I mean? So yeah. I'm not not too interested in that. So I would I wouldn't I wouldn't I'd be I'd be kind of happy if Judge went and broke the record in like Toronto at like in the in the in the in the tenth inning when 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 you know diehard Toronto fans are there like you know what I mean? whatever just right. like watching. Um, right. Anyway, uh, I happen to like the Yankees as a, as a stack in the spot, um, as kind of a, a non Atlanta type thing. I mean, I have Atlanta. Then we'll get to Boston and Baltimore, which is obviously another one you can go after in Fenway. Mm-hmm. But I, I kind of like the Yankees here. I mean, Jalisman, you know, listen, he he's he's he has a lot of striking upset. He throws it hard, and you know, you throw it hard, it can go far, <laughs> mm-hmm. go far in the other direction. So I actually do like the Yankees. The, the problem is, I'm not the problem, but it's weird. Like the Yankees, got to see what their lineup is. I guess it has been getting a little healthier though. So you got Stanton back, you have Rizzo back. I guess it's fair. Um I prefer another lefty I could count on here, but um I don't know. I, I do I do like Gausman, like you said. I'm not gonna play Severino with 80 pitches against Toronto. Um, but I I think that I like Gausman, and yeah, on the other hand, I do like the Yankees. Yeah, um, makes makes sense to me. I, I personally, I'm going the other way. I, I'm, I'm going to be Gausman, and I'm going to be not 
not in, uh, not playing the Yankees, but I totally understand. I think that that's that's a, a totally viable way to get different here. Um, all right, uh, let's see, uh, Mr. Let's... Ceiling, Mr. Ceiling, Jordan Lyles. Look at that. Yeah, I had him in my big one that day yeah. too. That was nice. Um, th- there's another thing you could do to get different is I don't think it's that crazy to play Jordan Lyles, uh, but I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> Why not? Because I like the other things I'm doing better. Um, for some reason, this is my DraftKings screen keeps freezing up on me, so it's kind of making this a little unpleasant. Sorry. Um, but I I I think this both the both offenses in this game are in play. I give the, a little bit of the edge to uh, the the other side of it, the the Orioles, the, the side of it. But I'm certainly not going to tell you that the Red Sox are bad plays. They're they're everybody in this game is going to be very highly owned on a small slate. It's baseball. I'm not going to to bite for that. Uh, I might end up with a one-off or something from this game, but I'm not, I'm certainly not trying to get to this. Yeah. I've had those two as rated my second and third best stats, Boston and Baltimore. Um, and, you know, if, I, if you don't, if you don't want to play Atlanta because of chalkiness, I don't know what else you can do unless, like you said, I mean, unless you want to be be contrarian and play the Reds or the, or the nationals. Listen, you play Reds and nationals, you can do whatever you want. I'll tell you this, that, I might even almost argue that that if you're playing Severino and Gaussman together with with like say Reds, I think you're even almost getting too contrary. You know what I mean? Like that that's a you know you which, which I guess there. I guess I don't I say too contrary. Maybe not in a four game slate. I guess you can't get too contrary in a four game slate. Yeah. That but I don't think I think that construction is going to be extremely rare. Um, yeah. Um, which is hey, that's what you got to do in these things. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I just for for what it's worth, it's just impossible to play him with this game log. But uh, but the but the Seabold even to maybe like body English ten fantasy points or something like that. Maybe he maybe yeah. he's sort of sort of in play. And, and if you really want something something silly, may, maybe you play Lyle Seabold together. Hope you get a hope you get an umpire in a bad mood. You know, against the hitters, you know, maybe you get these wind gusts blowing in that you don't know about. You anti game stack this game. Um, and then you could do, I mean, literally whatever you want hitting wise. Um, yeah. then, then you can play all that you can play like you play Acuna like four times if you want, like the same lineup. If you, if you, right, you know, right. And four, four, you can do a, a stack, four Acunas and four judges, you know, <laughs> and just kind of be done with it. Um, but, uh, I, I, listen. While Lyles goes against like my thing about like playing guys off ceilings, but when 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 you're not gonna, when no one's gonna play him, and it's a four game slate. Yep, I'll be more than happy to dismiss my to dismiss my theory. hundred uh, percent, I agree with you. Yeah, so I, I think by the way, Lyles, people probably get some ownership. Lyles is going to be the lowest owned pitcher on the slate, and it wouldn't be that crazy if he was the highest scoring pitcher on the slate. I don't think he'll be lower owned than uh, than Seabold, but oh, um, really. You, you see, you think Seabold will get more ownership than Lyle? I think Seabold and Abbott will both get more ownership than Lyle. And Anderson too, you think? A- Anderson for sure. Okay. I think there'll be some game loggers that see the 35 ball from Lyle's and say what I just said. I'll just yeah. take a shot and play again. <laughs> Maybe. We'll see. Um, but yeah, so I think, listen, you're, you're, you're taking more of a, uh, you're taking more of like kind of a sheets approach to this one, like with the Reds and Nationals. So mm-hmm. maybe, uh, Maybe that works out. May I might be taking more of a Bobby approach to try to take some like two offs out of these other games and see if I can't find the right guy. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see what happens. And both those builds are, are viable. And if I had to like, if I have, you know, I usually go through and I pick my favorite plays at every position in these kind of games um, or my favorite plays in, and to just try to try to fit them all in, whether or not they, they stack or make sense together or anything like that. Um, so I'll just quickly run through uh, Devers for Boston, uh, Rushman for Baltimore for the Yankees judge for Toronto Vlad. There's nothing shocking about any of these things um, for uh, Washington uh, Manessis uh, for Atlanta uh, Acuna. These are not, again, not, not nothing shocking Castro for Pittsburgh and for Cincinnati. If I had to take just one bat, I think it would be Friedel. Um, but I am personally going with the, uh, with this, the Reds and, and Washington. And I think that they are, much more viable than than maybe they're getting credit for in terms of ownership. So I'm going to, I'm going to be doing that. Okay. Um, yeah. You know, we, we, we do like a, a DFS freaky Friday, you know, like where you yeah. just change, change, change personalities or whatever, the person, whatever. Yeah. So maybe, maybe you'll, you'll play like, like stupid reds. Like I might do. 
and like stupid nationals like I might do, and I'll play like no stacks over three players. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what happens. I don't know. Just total switch positions. Yeah. We'll see. I'll take we'll see it, man. You've had better results this MLB season than I have. We'll see how it goes. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, good luck to everybody out there. And uh, I guess we'll be live. Sheets, are you able to do live at 5 30? Yes. Live, okay. live, I can definitely do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So live at 5 30. Um, and uh probably won't be the longest live. So jump on in and we'll be we'll be ready to answer questions and talk about this little small gamer. Cause as much as I complain about them and I never get excited. I think I've, my best results this season have actually been on these little slates. Um, good. Not, not all the time, but but it used to be all, the more games, the better. Uh, for the NBA, I always feel that way. But lately, it's it's been I've been able to find ways to get different, and that's you know it's, it's a, a totally different game basically playing a four game slate than it is playing a fifteen gamer. All right. Good luck to everybody, and we'll see you in Discord and at five thirty Eastern.